How's everyone doing? Everyone doing all right? We did all right. We got a lot more people, but we were able to manage. Um, can we first, before we go on, can we give it up for DJ Critical Mass over here? That was awesome. So I'd like to welcome you all to this event. My name is Ash Renarla. I'm the Student Association President. Um, it's great to be here. Um, it's great to talk in front of all of you. Uh, the Student Association, we, uh, we do four basic things. We advocate, allocate, advertise, and we assist. We advocate on behalf of students. We advertise student programming. Uh, we advertise student programming. Uh, and then, whoops, messed that one up. Um, a little nervous. Sorry about that. Um, so we advocate on behalf of students. We allocate over a million dollars to student orgs. We advertise student programming. And we assist and we help people out. And those last two with advertise and assist is we want to have more things like this, where we're here as a community, and that's really what it's all about, and that's what this brand's always about. So, before I mess up anymore, um, I'd like to introduce Vice President of External Relations, Lorraine Vols. Hi, GW. Thanks for being here. I, I'm really happy to see all of you. I'm really a little sad that so many people are outside those doors and can't get in, but hopefully we'll be able to um, make it up to them and they'll be able to get some food, see the logo, and see the movie. So really, I'm very excited for this event and for all of you to see the new look for um, the university. I did want to thank Ashwin and the Student Association and Lauren and the program board who have just been tremendous partners. Um, with the Division of External Relations in the university. We've done some really great work together already and I really look forward to the year ahead. So this has been a long process and um, you know when we first started it, thinking about GW, we weren't planning to um, really change the visual identity, but when we did research, we kind of found out that a lot of you think that this is a bold place, a very progressive place, and a modern place. And our look didn't really fit that. That's what really got us started thinking about doing um, these changes and kind of developing a look and feel that really represents who we are. And I'm really excited about it, and I hope you are too. We had a working committee of 75 people across universities, students, faculty, and staff, who've spent more time than you could ever imagine looking at colors, fonts, pictures, graphics, and um, we're really excited to um, share all that work with you. So, I, before we get started, I just want to introduce the Vice Provost, Forrest Maltzman. Uh, thank you, thank you, Lorraine and your team for your leadership in driving this initiative. You know, this, this is not a stagnant university. This is a university that is on the move, and it's reflected in so many ways uh, including by the record number of people who both want to work here and study here. And I'm really excited that we actually have a logo that reflects that this university is on the move. It is a bold logo. Uh, it is something that is both modern, but it is also something that solves a bunch of problems that we had with the old one, which was that it was not actually scalable, and so it didn't work when we put it onto web platforms and things like that. You know, logos and a visual identity are extremely important for any institution. And I think just about everybody here would recognize the logo for Facebook and Starbucks and the Olympics and the National Park Service. But they're particularly important for a university such as this. Because what a logo does is help tie diverse things together. And this university has all sorts of very, very good schools and departments and a first-rate hospital. But it's bigger and greater than the sum of its parts. And so what we wanted was a logo that could be used in all, by a variety of different subunits within GW, but also tie us together. And that's important because what it does is it increases the value of the degrees that those of you who are studying here will eventually earn and increases the visibility of the research and work that is going on um, on this uh, campus. Uh, the, of course, what is, makes a great university is not just the logo, but it's the people 
and their experiences. And so simultaneously that we are doing this over the next week or so, we are also uh, launching a campaign where we're asking you to go into a truck, which is somewhere outside, I gather, um, which, is, which is on H Street, for you to go ahead and tell your story. For those of you who are new and just entering GW, tell us why you came to GW. For those of you who have been here, tell us about one of those only at GW events. Tell us about that class that you took taught by Ben Bernanke or that Nobel Prize winner uh, and how stimulating and interesting that was. Or tell us about going ahead and playing Frisbee at midnight on the mall or whatever uh, you have done that makes GW such a special institution. Uh, to give you an example of that, over the summer we recorded a couple of people giving us their only at GW story. And so let me go ahead and put that up on the screen now. My name is Maggie Sexton. I'm a senior this year and my major is human services. My name is William Alexander. I'm originally from Washington, D.C. I'm a 2004 graduate of the School of Engineering and Applied Science with a degree in Mechanical Engineering and a 2006 graduate of the School of Business. I'm Liz Doherty. I'm going to be a senior. I am in the Columbian College of Arts and Sciences. I'm a political science major. My name is Alan Greenberg. I'm an alumnus of the George Washington University School of Medicine, class of 1982. And I'm currently professor and chair of the Department of Epidemiology and Biostatistics in GW's School of Public Health and Health Services. My name is Betsy Goodall, and I'm a third year law student at GW. My second week freshman year, the GW College Democrats were actually coming together to go to the White House and rally for the passage of health, universal health care. It was amazing because it was my second week in college, and I got to go to the front of the White House with a bunch of other students and, and rally for this and that's not that's just not an average college experience I don't think. I don't think I really came into my own and had that room to grow and the need to be very independent and very confident until I was in the military. As a female in the military if you're going to be respected you have to make yourself respected and I'm a very feminine girl on top of that. Even when I was in the Marine Corps I always had my toenails painted pink under my boots. During my last um, year or two at CDC, I was contacted by our former dean who asked if I would be interested in coming back to my alma mater, George Washington University, and helping to build the School of Public Health in the nation's capital. The opportunity to come full circle and having been here as a medical student and come back as an academic chair in the School of Public Health has been a remarkable experience. I think what I've tried to do is reproduce the educational experience and opportunities that I had as a medical student. When I heard that human trafficking still existed, that it wasn't over with the Emancipation Proclamation, that it still exists around the world and in the United States, it just, it really changed me. I feel like when you hear about something like that, you can't hear about the statistic and hear about the problem and just move on with your life. You think you're gonna go someplace just to get a degree, get an education, and you end up coming out with lifelong friendships and picture books full of memories. You realize, yeah, this was one of the best decisions I made in my life. This is the George Washington University. And what we make is history. This is the George Washington University. And what we make is history. This is the George Washington University. And what we make is history. How are you making history? How are you changing the game? How are you changing the game? How are you making history? So, so just like Will, Maggie, and Alan, I want to urge you over the next uh, couple of days to go into the truck, tell us your story, and if you do, you will get a, a GW t-shirt like this uh, in return for you telling your story. And now it is my pleasure to introduce to you President Stephen Knapp. Thank you, uh, thank you Dr. Mossman. Let me ask, um, how many uh, out in the audience here are incoming freshmen? Can we see the hands of incoming freshmen? Raise those hands high. You are our newest students. Let's, uh, let's uh, greet all of them. Okay? How many are returning students today? How many of you are returning? Thank you all for coming out today to be part of this celebration. 
Uh, welcome back. Welcome or welcome back to the George Washington University after what I hope was a restful, productive summer. We've got a lot of work ahead of us uh, together. This is a pivotal year at the George Washington University for a lot of reasons. As those who were here last spring are aware, this is the 100th anniversary of our arrival here in Foggy Bottom, one of our main locations. Of course, we also have Mount Vernon. We've got our Virginia Science Technology Campus. But this central location, the university we're at right now, we arrived here in 1912, so it's the 100th anniversary of that. And that's one of the reasons why it's so important that we're taking a look, a fresh look, at the way we present ourselves to the world beyond the walls of this campus. And uh, it's also a year in which we're about to launch a strategic plan that will guide us all the way through the next 10 years leading into our third century as university. You know, our, our bicentennial is 2021. We were founded in 1821. And so you're gonna, we're gonna have that bicentennial in 2021 and that will take us into our third century. We're right on the verge of that transition. So we thought it would make sense to take a look at how we were telling the story of this institution to our university community and also to the world beyond. And that's the reason that the visual identity we're revealing today is so important because it's one of the ways in which that story is first, at least begins to be presented to the multiple audiences that reach us through our websites, through uh, our flags, through our business cards, through everything we do across the university. So we have developed a new vocabulary, a new way of talking about the university, a new way of depicting the university visually that will present our story, at least in its raw form, and then there's a lot more to say about it, but that will be the initial impression that many people around the world form of this university, that visual uh, identity that's expressed in this new vocabulary. I have to say I'm impressed by the new vocabulary. I think it does a great job of connecting the vision that our founding imaginer, our originator, George Washington himself, General George Washington, when he died in 1799 and left in his last will and testament a vision of a university that would educate citizen leaders on into the future. And we now do that not just for the United States but for the world. Uh, that vision, I think, is embodied in this new way of imagining the university. And it also connects us to our aspirations to become simply the most powerful and influential research university in one of the greatest cities in the world and certainly one of the greatest capital cities in the world right here in Washington, D.C. That's what we're trying to capture and what you're about to see. And to do that, we've done some streamlining. We've removed the little doojiggies on letters that are called serifs. You'll see that. We're now going from serif to sans serif. Okay? It's important. You're going you're gonna to learn what that means in a moment. And we're also changing our portrait of General Washington himself. Instead of the photograph you often see of a painting that has him looking to the left, we've kind of reoriented him to be more forward-looking. And we've actually done, with the help of one of our own staff, John McGlasson, who is a, is John here? Where is John? There's John. John McGlasson went back to the source. He went back to the great image of George Washington that was captured in the Jacques Houdon sculpture, you know, one of the great sculptors of the Enlightenment period, Jacques Houdon, who did the, the, the figure of Washington that sits at the entrance to University Yard, just about a block and a half from here. That's become the model for this new graphic presentation of George Washington you're going to see in just a moment. So I want to thank John for what I think was some very imaginative and very effective work that he did in producing that new portrait. That's going to be our new introduction to the world that looks at us uh, in so many ways in which we represent the university. I do want to thank Lorraine Voles, Vice President for, you've already heard from her, <laughs> Vice President for External Relations, and the kind of mad scientist behind this whole project, Jin Chan. Jin's around here somewhere. Where's Jin? Uh, and, um, and I think there's been a whole team, as you heard, 75 people were part of a working group this has been a very collaborative process. We've actually engaged students, we've engaged faculty, staff, alumni across our university community, which now numbers more than a quarter million around the world, have been engaged in this process of taking a new look at our visual identity. So what I'd like to do uh, to introduce this is invite 
Uh, Lorraine Voles, if she'd come back out here, and Forrest Maltzman, if uh, he'd come out here, and also um, Lauren Schenfeld, who's the chair of the program board, if you could come out here. We're now going to unveil, come on, oh, and I'm sorry, and Asher, of course, president of the, uh, president of the Student Association. We've got our, anybody else want to be part of this? So, uh, John, why don't you come out here, too? Come on, you come out here, stand out here. Let me see this thing. What we're going to do now is we're going to have an unveiling, a virtual unveiling, of our new visual identity. Here we go. Before we do that, I want a drum roll from, our, from <laughs> DJ Danny. Thank you. 